me. My webinar. Hello, everyone. Oh. Sorry, Jane, you're good. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the launch of our second season of Pitch for Good series, this time kicking off with our Black Founders Edition. Last year, we were able to award over $25,000 and heard from more than 50 entrepreneurs over the course of seven events, ending in our finale Tennessee Tough event where we partnered with the Tennessee Titans and Felicia Jackson took home a year long Titan sponsorship package. Felicia is now participating today as a judge. Being an entrepreneur can sometimes feel like fighting a lonely uphill battle in the best of times. That is why we are working to level the playing field to make entrepreneurship more accessible through programs like Twin Day and events like Pitch for Good. We are so grateful for our sponsors, Cummins, Ewan, Marion Kaufman Foundation, GP Sources, Dell Technologies, and Launch Tennessee, as well as our amazing judges who are dedicating their time and being with us today. We ended up with over 70 submissions, and we want to thank the Unsung Heroes, our selection committee, for judging all of the pitches. It was a very difficult process, but they got it down to six impressive entrepreneurs. And today we are so excited to be listening to them on how they are making an impact. Now, to get it started, I'm gonna hand it over to Bryn Plummer. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Jane, for kicking us off. And as Jane mentioned, this is a comeback. This is our second season of Pitch for Good. So glad that you are all here with us. One of the things that I just learned about this event is that this is the largest Pitch for Good we've ever had with more than 450 RSVPs. So thank you, everyone who got the word out. And also, I think that shows uh, the tremendous appetite that people have for this community, for our Black founder community, and for entrepreneurship writ large here in Middle Tennessee. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and kick us off. I'm Bryn Plummer. I'm the Vice President of Inclusion and Community Relations at the Entrepreneur Center. And as Jane mentioned, I lead a program called Twin Day, which is a key Swahili word for Let's Go that was co-founded with other Black founders here in uh, the EC. It's a year-long program for entrepreneurs of color in all industries that are looking to significantly grow their businesses. So just wanted to let you know what that was in case you were wondering, what is, what's that Twin Day program? A little bit of housekeeping, and then we will just get to introducing our phenomenal judging panel. Clearly, this is a webinar, so if you are participating, you won't be able to talk, but you can certainly participate by keeping things going in the chat. You can ask questions, give shout outs. We want to see it all. And if you see someone pitch and you're like, I am really dying to get in touch with that person, please feel free to let that be known in the chat or to DM them directly. Um, we all have DM capabilities, so you can get in touch with people. You can sign in those DMs, make it known who you want to talk to. Um, this event is being recorded so we can share it in all its glory afterwards. If you're interested in seeing past Pitch for Goods, you can go to youtube.com and search for the National Entrepreneur Center. You can see all of our programming there. And then finally, I want to cover what an elevator pitch is. So you might have seen these before, but it also might be a new concept to you. So let's say you get into an elevator. Felicia Jackson is there her, and all of her fame and her CPR rep, Tennessee Titan Small Business Partner of the Year glory. Ah! And you've got one minute from floor zero to floor 20 to convince Felicia to invest in your idea. That's an elevator pitch. No slides, no materials. You just have to convince someone that you are the person to lead this phenomenal enterprise that you're getting off the ground. So that's what an elevator pitch is. So now let's meet our judges. You can likely see them over there. They're in their little rectangles, just dying to meet you all and to meet these entrepreneurs. First, we've got Mobilaji Sukumbi. He is the, uh, he's with Dell Technologies and he's one of our event sponsors. He's the head of strategic partnerships in the Center for Entrepreneurship at Dell. And Mobilaji is someone that we are really excited to get to work with at the EC. Um, really kind of a tech and IT titan. So we're really glad that you're here, Mobilaji. Second, we have Shalia Harris of uh, Verizon Wireless, who's one of our newer partners to Twin Day. She's the manager of state and local government affairs for Verizon Wireless, and she's a dedicated supporter of the EC program. Um, she is between Memphis and Nashville, and she's also spent a lot of time getting to know us as an entrepreneur center and uh, former educator as well. So I think we will see a lot of the connections between entrepreneurship, education, community affairs, and community development through our partnership with Verizon. Then we've got Tony Hickey, the chief 
of Intellectual Property uh, Council and Deputy General Counsel for Cummins. Um, Cummins, if you all don't know, is one of the companies that we have just uh, probably our newest partner overall, Cummins, and they are the phenomenal, exciting, landmark, revolutionary people who put up $26,000 in grants for today's winners. We are so thankful, our entrepreneurs are thankful that that money can go so far and someone who's just getting off the ground. So thank you. And then last but certainly not least, we have Felicia Jackson, as I mentioned, who's the founder of CPR Rap. And as Jane touched on, Felicia took home the big prize for Pitch for Good last year, where she pitched again and again and again, and finally became the Tennessee Titans Small Business Partner of the Year. So if you're watching a game, you're at the stadium, they have one small business partner that in this given calendar year, they're, they're work, I shouldn't say work year, season, Clearly I'm stepping into unknown territory. In their season, you'll get to see Felicia Jackson's product, CPR Wrap, which is just something that we are so delighted about. And she's also been helped, she's going back to serve as a judge today on behalf of GP Sources, which is one of our event sponsors. She's been working with them on her product manufacturing and we'll hear from them a little bit later on. So we've got a good mix of people who work directly with entrepreneurs in different industries represented on our judging panel. And we'll talk to them more as we get deeper into the program. So first, let's go into the ground rules. Each entrepreneur has a minute to pitch. Then there will be two minutes of Q&A with our judges. And then we'll go in order of stage. So we've got two stages today. We have launch, which is for businesses that are between zero and $25,000 in revenue. And then we've got up and coming, which is someone who is 25,000 uh, 25, or more into their enterprise and annual recurring revenue. And then um, we do have some pretty exciting prizes. So Jeremy, if you just wanna show that next slide, Yes, as mentioned, $26,000 provided by Cummins. So our first place, excuse me, our first place winner in the up and running category, that's our businesses that are a little further along, will be awarded $13,000. Businesses in the launch category, again, that's companies that are zero to $25,000 in annual recurring revenue, will be awarded $10,000. And today, for the first time since Pitch for Good started, our crowd favorite will also be walking away with a cash prize of $3,000. Again, all provided by Cummins as part of their care initiative, which we'll learn more about as we get into the program. So with that, I think it's time to get going. We are getting into our pitches. I'm thrilled today that we have so many companies that we know uh, in the EC family and so many companies we don't. We have a really good mix of companies that were new to us, as well as companies that have been part of the EC family. So we're going to begin with a company that is actually part of our project music cohort called Healthy Hip Hop. Roy, are you on? I am on. Roy, wonderful. All right. Roy is going to kick us off with our first pitch of the day. Roy, you may begin. Hello, my name is Roy Scott. I am founder and CEO of Healthy Hip Hop, and we are building an urban Disney, infusing hip hop culture with innovative technology, education, and positive attributes. The platform that we built, I want you to think Spotify meets TikTok in a curated environment for children and families. This business was born because I was that kid who was really influenced by hip-hop culture and didn't understand the importance of education. So after I graduated high school, I decided instead of going to college that I was going to be a rapper. Uh, but my entire life changed when I was picking up my son Justice from school and I noticed him repeat my lyrics that promoted drugs, violence, and misogyny. Uh, that was my light bulb moment that I would have to completely change my direction and healthy hip-hop was born. We've been growing the brand ever since and evolved to a tech company Recently launched our app, have over 5,000 active users and are proud members of the Project Music 2020 cohort. Join us as we transform a generation through music, mindfulness, and motivation. Healthy hip hop is for the children, for the culture. Thank you. Roy, thank you so much. Um, I have been, as someone who is a big fan of talented children on TikTok and Instagram, I love that this exists because there's so many talented young people and so much kids are on the internet. And there's not a lot of places for them to be on the internet safely. So I love that you're thinking about that content for kids. Absolutely. With that, we're going to hand it over to our judges to ask questions. We're not going to go in any particular order and not everyone has to ask a question. We'll have two minutes for questions. So anyone who wants to ask the first question may begin. Um, I guess I can go first. This is great because I have a, uh, a grandson who loves music and I constantly have to tell him, don't say that, don't say that. So this is so needed. So thank you for, for doing this. Um, thank you. The question I wanted to ask is, uh, how do you specifically make money uh, with this? Sure, so we sell an annual subscription directly to parents. So it's $40 for the year. 
Uh, there is a freemium model, so you can get access to limited content and limited, limited in-app features, but it's $40 annually to have full access. And then on the B2B, on the enterprise level, we sell a subscription directly to school districts and also work with corporate partners, and they get a deeper discount when it's a larger number of licenses. Roy, like Alicia, I love this idea. I may have um, my niece listening now, and as she was growing up, when she would ride in the car with me singing along, I'd say, stop singing, pick up a book because of the lyrics. So the influence of the next generation, I completely support the idea behind this. Can you talk a little bit about who's writing the lyrics and whether you have any intellectual property protection around those lyrics or the music that you're creating? Absolutely. So myself and my co-founder, so my co-founder is Wes Smith, and he created a character called PJ Panda. And so PJ Panda is for healthy hip hop with Mickey Mouse is for Disney. And so we have a team of writers and producers, so everything is done in house. So we completely outright own all the music. So we don't have to worry about any intellectual property or copyright infringements or issues because everything is 100% original. And, and we right. do okay. some like what we call like like healthy hip hop remixes, but those are all free of charge. And we usually put those on like our YouTube and stuff like that. We don't monetize that. We've got about 20 seconds remaining. So probably one more question allowed. Quick question. So hello, Roy. Uh, love the simplicity, right? Uh, I think you said uh, Spotify mix uh, TikTok, right? I love it. Clean, straightforward, uh, straight to the point. Uh, question for you is what's your top priority over the next six months? The top priority for over the next six months is to have a successful launch. So right now our app is live. So I know you, Felicia, you said you had a granddaughter. Uh, our app is live, you can download it right now, but we're still considering that a public beta. Uh, so we've really been doing a lot of deep customer discovery, getting the feedback on how to really have a successful launch. So really it's getting to 100,000 users and 25,000 of those becoming paid users. And that'll put us at a million in revenue. So that's our top priority over this next six months. Okay, to go from 5,000 to 100,000 users, right? Correct. And because okay. that 5,000 was really all organic. So now we're really getting to, to the whole push behind it with marketing, social influencers, et cetera. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Roy. Fabulous, uh, fabulous start to our pitches. Thank you so, so much. And congratulations. We're loving to see this grow. Loving Thank to you see for having grow. me. Appreciate you. Yes. Um, all right, up next. Wow, I'm just thinking about all the different things PJ Panda is probably getting into right now. Up next, we've got yeah. Erica Dillard <laughs> with Pop Check Technologies. Erica, are you on? Looks like we've got. I am. Erica. Can you hear me? I can. I can hear you perfectly. All right. Yeah, whenever, whenever you're ready, your minute will begin and you can take it away. Thank you. Could you tell the difference between leg pain from a muscle cramp versus leg pain from a life threatening blood clot? If your answer is no, then you're not alone. Yet we ask patients to make these critical distinctions about medical complications every time they're discharged home after surgery. Sadly, one third of patients will experience surgical complications. And of these, one of the most common, potentially life-threatening yet preventable are venous clots. My name is Dr. Erica Diller and I'm the founder and CEO of PopCheck Technologies. My years of experience managing high-risk surgical patients help lay the foundation for the development of our AI-driven remote monitoring technology that will not only more efficiently prevent clots, but unlike our competition, provide a means to predict the development of venous clots, potentially saving billions in healthcare costs annually. Please join us as we create safer, more effective, equitable, and accessible care strategies that will enable our patients to, uh, to recover from surgery stress-free. Thank you. Erica, thank you so much. I love your background also, it's highly, <laughs> it does pop. And I also just love to see, I think it's been a year where we've all been thinking about disparities and health outcomes and uh, renewed attention has been brought to it. So I love to see um, a black woman in the space of healthcare who's thinking about how are the different ways that we service and provide healthcare uh, nuanced and potentially more equitable. So thank you so much for being in that space and doing that hard work. Thank you. You ready? Oh, yes, absolutely. You ready for your two minutes? <laughs> yes, <laughs> please. I'm excited. All right. It looks like you all are ready. Just chomping at the bit. Take it away, judges. Uh, great presentation. Um, great uh, potential solution to, I know, is a huge issue. Um, if you could narrow down your specific <laughs> audience, who would it be? So... We are initially starting because there's so many patients that will be at risk for surgical complications. Anyone who's admitted to the hospital really over a 24 hour period will be at risk. 
But we really want to target those patients who have surgeries, number one, that are highest risk for development of DVTs and those that actually factor into CMS's reimbursement penalties when they develop DVTs. So you have hip and knee replacements, which are a re really large group of patients that are covered through CMS, mostly because they're older. Um, and those patients, when they return to the hospital, will tack on reimbursement penalties for the physician, for the hospital that they were discharged from, not only for the reimbursement, but also for the uh, development of a post-operative complication, such as a DVT. So it's a double whammy for those patients when they return. Um, I, this is great. You know, I'm in the medical field, physical therapist, yes. and I always had to deal with that, right? And I actually had a DVT once as well. Yes. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. So my question to you is, how would a, a person, like, I know who you said your target customer is, are you working yeah. directly with hospitals? Uh, and do they take this home in an app to enter data? So initially, we, what we're doing is targeting our local hospitals here um, in Memphis, Tennessee. So um, one of the major hospitals here is Regional One, which is a major trauma center. Um, and we've been in discussions with them about utilizing our device to really, number one, prove, uh, do that proof of concept in patients, but also show that that, that revenue model that we're going to save the money on the, on the back end from not getting those reimbursements and uh, reimbursement penalties um, will also kind of help them make a better case to utilize our product in the hospital setting. But because it's a remote monitoring technology, our long-term goal is to have this go home with patients after they have a hip and knee replacement so that they are monitored over that critical time period where they're at highest risk. Dr. Dillard, thank you so much for talking to thank us about you. Health Check. Super thank needed, you. very necessary, very timely. Um, and thank you so much for being here. And thanks for representing Memphis too. Love That's to my prototype, by the way. Yeah, look at that <laughs> prototype. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Wonderful work. Thank you so much. And now we're going to bring it home in the launch category with someone I'm really excited for you all to meet. We've got Faye Pryor on from PottyCap. Faye, are you there? Yes, I am. Wonderful. Faye, um, I'm going to hand it over to you, my friend. You've got your minute and you can begin whenever you're ready. Thousands of women are hospitalized yearly due to falls because of inability to get to the bathroom. This is a costly and sometimes deadly problem. There are no portable urinal devices for women to use. Men have urinals, women have bedpans. My name is Faye Pryor, physical therapist and creator of the Potty Cap, a urinal aid designed to be an alternative solution for women when they can't get to the bathroom. The potty cap will enable women to safely urinate from the bedside, wheelchair, or any seated surface. It is designed for the way women naturally urinate. Using potty cap will be a tremendous savings in time and cost, but most importantly, in the independency of maintaining toileting. This grant will be used for manufacturing our first units here in America. Our goal is to make potty cap the number one portable urinal aid not just in the U.S., but in the world. Won't you help us make this possible? Thank you. Faye, thank you so much. Again, another innovation that seems so obvious that has just not been made yet, not been brought to market yet. So really glad that you're in this space. I imagine there's a lot of other um, uses and, and, and ways that this could impact people's lives from camping and other situations where they're not able to um, be mobile and get to the restroom. So thank you so much for thinking about this. With that, I'm going to give it over to our judges. Again, two minutes will be on the clock and I'll start as soon as you ask your question. Ms. Pryor, I love this idea, uh, using innovation to add value, simplicity, um, and improve overall the quality of someone's life. So can you talk with us a little bit about how you designed your product and at what phase you are in the overall design and, and production? Okay, quickly. One of my patients 11 years ago, I had on a, on a bedpan, we spilled it, and she said, you would think somebody would come up with something that a woman wouldn't have to urinate on their back. A guy comes in, I've got cleaned her up. He comes in with a baseball cap. I look at it, I look at her. I go get a new baseball cap. She puts it under her and says, can I use it? And I said, not now. Tennessee State University helped me in making the first prototype. We did a research study and we're here. Uh, quickly, may I ask, uh, this is great, of course, um, of course uh, is, is there, <laughs> what is your price point on your product? 
right now, because we're making it in America, would be $49.99. Of course, of course, you know, the more you make, the more you spread it. My goal is to get it into every hospital and healthcare facility in the country. So hopefully it will go down in price as we begin to make more and sell more. Are you considering direct to consumer as well? Yes. We will be launching at retail for a web. We're looking at both hospitals, healthcare facilities, and the individual consumer, definitely. And like she said, we're looking at campers. We're looking at all ages. You know, you can be uh, going into labor or delivery, and this could be uh, be something you could use quite easily. We've got time for maybe one more question. I don't want to take up all the airspace, but I would be interested to know how TS contribute to the helping you with your prototype. Did okay. you see right. that design? The, you, the engineering department and the physical therapy department, three wonderful students, a great instructor that was happens to be my uh, roommate in college at UT Memphis, was able to get in the engineering department connected. And I was one of the first outsiders for Tennessee State to come in and actually work with on a project like this. So. Kudos to Blue. <laughs> yes, go Big Blue. And we just are so excited that TSU, we have such a rich university innovation community here between TSU, Vanderbilt. Meharry has certainly led the way with our COVID response as a city. So what a great way to kind of finish out this round just to show the amazing minds that are here and helping people innovate and make beautiful things that change the world truly. So thank you, Ms. Pryor. Also, Ms. Pryor just learned how to use Zoom very recently. And you killed it. So <laughs> I know you killed it. And we're, we're delighted your background is so magnifique. Thank you so, so much, Faye. And we'll see you soon. Faye brought us home in the launch category. We are, I hope you're feeling as inspired as I am to tackle problems that you see in your local community, to tackle problems that feel like they just haven't been fully addressed or addressed in a way that really uh, resolves the problem fully, uh, because that's exactly what these founders have done. They've taken on problems that they saw in their communities and decided to change them up. So um, we're going to get into our up and running category in just a moment. Judges, I'll give you a second just to record your scores if you haven't done so already. Um, all right, good. All right, here we go, up and running. One of the things that excites me about this category is that we're seeing more and more black owned businesses reach and attain levels of success that are novel um, and rare, frankly, outperforming a lot of what we see in the broader community. So entrepreneurs, and one of the things I think is particularly true as someone who works with black founders and is a black person themselves is black founders are always looking to help the person no matter how far along or how early they are in their journey, they're always looking to share what they know with someone else. And that couldn't be more true for the three founders we have in the up and running category who are always there to mentor, always there to support and always there to connect people who need, uh, who need whatever they have to give. So let's begin with our friend, Brittany Cole of Career Thrivers. Brittany, are you out there? I am here. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Brittany. Your library is incredibly impressive. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you can you may begin whenever you'd like, and you can take it away. Fantastic. Thank you, Bryn. Since the summer of 2020, shareholders of Fortune 500 companies have been making the same demand: show me your diversity. And while organizations are scrambling to recruit more Black and Brown talent. Diversity isn't really the problem. You see, there's another end to the pipeline problem, and that's the leaky pipe where black and brown talent leave their organizations at one and a half to three times the rate of their white colleagues, and the clogged pipe where black and brown talent are promoted at slower rates than their white colleagues. Business Insider states that US organizations are leaving $1 trillion on the table by not being inclusive. My name is Brittany Cole, and as the founder of Career Thrivers, an inclusive leadership development firm, we have a solution, and that is the Inclusive Leadership Institute, a platform for live learning, courses, and on-demand coaching to equip people leaders with the skills that they need to develop, retain, and advance Black and Brown talent. Select Career Thrivers as the winner of this up and running pitch competition today and partner with me to unclog the pipe, to give the skills to organizations that they need to cultivate a more inclusive culture. Thank you. Brittany, Brittany, thank you so much. I believe I was reading in the McKinsey and Co who does a report each year on women in the workplace. I believe I was reading a, about a phenomenon called this broken rung of leadership where now there are increasing numbers of minority talent at that kind of front level, entry level, but there's that broken rung to get to senior level leadership. And I don't think anyone's quite addressed it fully. So there's clearly 
a lot of opportunity in the in the place that you're playing in career thrivers. All right. Thank Let's you, go to thank you. Yes, of course. Let's go to our judges who will have two minutes to ask you questions about career thrivers. Uh, first, phenomenal presentation. I was fully engaged the whole time, so I appreciate you for that. Um, if you could choose one thing, aside from money, of course, if you can choose one thing that will really push your whole organization forward that you would need, what would that be? Great people. Um, <laughs> business comes down to, to, to great people. It's why I choose to do the work that I do every day. And for career thrivers, it's no different. Um, and so part of this pitch competition, if I were to win today, would go towards um, specifically bringing in two additional coaches for some really strong leads that we have to um, start a beta with two Fortune 500s. And so it, it'd be people for me, which of course ends up being about um, money, but people. Hello, Brittany. Um, Hi, love the energy. Uh, I think that was a big thing. I, I go from your presentation, so I have to. Um, I agree. You know, um, love the energy. Um, my question is, what is the expansion strategy, right? So, is the focus here to uh, maybe start in the Middle Tennessee area? Is it more of like you know a national uh, expansion strategy? So, w like, what do you have in mind from an expansion strategy standpoint? Sure. So it's definitely been, I've been focused um, definitely on Nashville. Um, I'm, I'm a Nashvillean, Nashville's home. And so focusing on corporations here and then expanding regionally and um, definitely a, a lot of national opportunity for us. Um, one thing that I've learned over the last couple of years with building career thrivers is just the depth opportunity with working with corporations. I come from a commercial background, being a commercial leader. And so really having the opportunity to maybe start with, let's just say Dale here in Nashville but then having that depth opportunity to be able to expand um, nationally to serve leaders across business units and, and industries within that corporation. And so um, that's, that's our strategy and our goal. And what makes us um, a bit different in terms of being able to facilitate that strategy is we aren't just focusing in on the leadership and training dynamic, but we're really um, bringing in both ends uh, of the bookcase, if you will, to focus on the diverse emerging talent within that's already within the organization, as well as the mid-level managers that are leading those people. Yeah, I'm glad you said uh, that, you know, there's an opportunity to start with Dell. I think uh, we have our second largest uh, physical office in Nashville, Tennessee, right? So hence, that's why we're more involved in. And I think there's a lady on the call right now called Nikki Gibson, who is actually a part of our DNI team and ERG team. So I'm glad you said Dell. So yeah, we need to definitely connect. So thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Would love that. And, and love Nikki. She's actually been on our Career Thrivers podcast. So awesome. good Great. to see you. Yes, shout out to Nikki Gibson, a longtime friend of the EC and just probably one of the leaders I look up to most in the Nashville community, Nikki Gibson over at Dell. All right, Brittany, phenomenal work. Thank you so much for bringing the energy to start this second round uh, really at a very high level. Let's keep it high and go on to our next founder, Joshua Mundy of Pivot Technology School. Joshua, let's see, here he comes. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Josh. There's just so everyone knows there's a little transition that's not has nothing to do with the founders. But when you take someone in zoom from from attendee to panelist, there's a little bit of a lag. So our founders are all with it in it. It's just little technology things. Josh with that. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you doing? Living very large, getting my life watching all of these pitches. And we're going to continue to, to move forward and we're going into a space that I think will have tremendous implications on the future of Nashville in much the same way that Brittany's concept does and thinking about the workforce and ultimately generational wealth and generational life outcomes for Nashvilleans. So with that, Josh, you can take it away. Thank you. Well, the average median income for minorities in the US is $35,000. The pandemic has accelerated automation and has eliminated 25% of jobs. Hello, my name is Joshua Mundy, and I am the co-founder of Pivot Technology School. Pivot Tech is a 20-week accelerator teaching data analytics, software development, and cybersecurity. It is our vision to get more minorities trained and engaged in tech careers. We at Pivot believe tech is the great equalizer. And if we can get one person in a household trained, the average junior level tech salary is $65,000. Pivot Tech is committed to creating a pipeline of diverse tech talent. The world is shifting quickly to tech and AI, and less than 3% of minorities have the skills to thrive. Brick by brick, we will build bridges to economic prosperity. Thank you for your time. Let's change the world. 
Josh, thank you so much. Pivot Technology has been growing like a weed over the past few months of people has been, have been seeking out new training. I know that you all have added a ton of new suites in terms of your product offerings and course offerings now from coding to data analytics. And so really glad to see you all recognizing this gap in our workforce and, and addressing it head on. With that, let's transition to our judges. Judges, you may begin your two minutes of questions. As always, I will be in the chat to just let you know when we have about 30 to 20 seconds remaining. So Joshua, thanks so much for the presentation. I was rushing to take my, um, to unmute because I had to get in here with these other technology companies to let you know that we're a technology company also. And so we are keenly interested um, in my organization in diversity and inclusion, and in particular, opening up that pipeline with um, those that are trained in the STEM fields. Can you talk with us a little bit about, I heard Bryn uh, mention this, what work are you doing now? What programs do you have in place and how have you launched? Can you share with us the capacity of your organization? Yeah, so we have, like, like Brent said, we've been growing like crazy. So we've already graduated two classes. Uh, we've been able to take individuals that have uh, been making like 12 to $13 an hour, now making $65,000 uh, at uh, some, of the, some of our partner organizations. Uh, so we've been able to train people up. We have, we launched our 501c3 organization as well called uh, Project Pivot is where we do um, tech training in the community from uh, people like uh, Thistle Farms to Big Brothers Big Sisters. And we're just really trying to get engaged uh, with the community to get them involved in technology. We also have a, uh, a partnership with Republic Charter School, which we have curriculum that we've developed in that school. So we're trying to create the pivot tech pipeline. So giving these kids options, like everybody is not suited for the four year college degree route, but being able to get them options and getting them in touch with technology early is, is what we plan to do. We have about 30 seconds remaining. Josh, um, hello. I love this so much. I really, really love this uh, because it, it touches on empowerment, right? The, the ability, the potential to change um, someone's life and future generations to come. So I really love it. So kudos to you, sir. Um, also love this because, you know, there, there are a number of things I've personally done in terms of like, you know, um, with, with, with youths in West Africa around this, around technology, right? You know, uh, camps and, and stuff. One thing I wanted to um, ask you is that Bryn mentioned the fact that you're growing so fast. Can you talk a little bit about, about your team? Like, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing that I really would stand on is we have a solid team. Uh, so we have uh, my business partner, which is Quan Clark. He's our chief operating officer. Uh, we work with Courtney Rogers. She oversees operations. We have instructors. So it's not just Josh trying to teach classes and pitch and work with corporations. We have about 15 people on our team that's really helping us grow and scale and really dominate their lane. That's what we believe in. So everybody has their lane that they focus in on and uh, yeah, we're, we're growing and we have the people to really handle the capacity. All right, Josh, thank you so much. And talk about Pivot. You are someone who takes on lots of different entrepreneurial endeavors. So glad that you have taken your tremendous energy and talent and tackled this issue for the betterment of really everybody in Nashville. So applause to you. Hope you all keep growing. I have a hunch you will uh, continue to grow at a really steady pace. So or maybe not steady, maybe a little bit of a hockey stick right now, but Congrats, we're so glad you're part of the EC family. All right, bringing us home, Courtney Hale. Courtney Hale is coming online now. All right, looks like he's getting promoted. There's Courtney, hello Courtney, happy Thursday, happy Thursday. <laughs> happy Thursday, happy Thursday. It's great to see you. I'm going to put a minute on, no, I'm gonna put a minute on the clock and you're gonna be able to take it away. I hope you all can see some of the color in the background I think is highly representative of Courtney's personality and the way he impacts the people around him. So Courtney, the time is yours. Thank you. Hey, what's good guys? I am Super Money Court and I am the chief hope dealer of Super Money Kids. Think of your most foolish financial mistake. Now ask yourself, should we be teaching our kids about money? In a country where cryptocurrency can go crazy in a year, and people are actually getting rich off of a Reddit board, we're still learning our financial lessons through trial and error. There are insufficient resources that prepare our young people to master their personal finances. And I found this to be unacceptable. As a solution, I created Super Money Kids, 
as an engaging and age appropriate way to introduce children to the world of personal finance. We do this with a bank that we designed and digital curriculum that we license to schools and youth organizations. We even partner with corporations to sponsor this program. By winning this competition, it will power our goal to make financial education accessible for all students in America. Help us inspire the next generation of creators, dreamers, and innovators. Thank you. Courtney, thank you so much. I think we were all probably thinking about our money mistake um, with great regret. And so I love the idea that this is a generation where we can put that to bed. There's just certain things we don't have to try. You don't have to touch the stove to see if it's hot. I think that's going to be tremendously impactful on generations and generations of people, right? So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to the judges to ask Courtney about his fantastic pitch. Courtney, this was phenomenal. Uh, I'm a former high school educator. Uh, part of the courses that I taught was personal finance, uh, marketing, all that good fun stuff. And so I definitely think that this is needed. Uh, my question is, how early do you think we should start implementing this program in our schools? Yeah, I, um, I actually believe it should start in elementary school, which is uh, this, this particular program, Super Money Kids, is targeted at elementary age students through sixth grade. Um, you know, managing money is a habit, and we want to start these conversations at the point that our children are developing new habits. Courtney, this is great. Uh, I, I was thinking, like Brian was saying, the things that I did with my money and uh, the education I wish I had when I was growing up about fun, uh, funds. Uh, is anything about what you created proprietary? Uh, and if so, well, first, if you can answer that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Super Money Kids is a, a trademark that we own and all of our content is copyrighted. Okay. Uh, and also along with that, I know you're saying you're working with schools as well, but is it something that as a parent, I can use in my own uh, home, you know, to educate my children as well or grandchildren? Thank you so much for asking that question. Um, one of the things that we're working on right now, we actually not working on it, we've actually done it already, is uh, done a redesign so Super Money Kids can be available to families at home. We did a, a pilot course um, of that program. We called it a Super Money Kids Home Edition uh, this month. And um, very little marketing. We had 30 families on it. And so we believe that once we add that product to our digital marketing that we do, um, we'll do really, really, really well. Um, and the next phase of that enhancement is for uh, this program to be completely self-paced as well. Fantastic, Courtney, that brings us to the end of your two minutes. There it goes, end of our two minutes. Thank you so much for talking to us about Super Money Kids. And if you all don't know, I would highly recommend you follow Courtney on Instagram. He's always doing really exciting things. I know you're working on some projects in Bordeaux, which is uh, wonderful to see some investment happening in our community in Northwest Nashville, which has long needed that investment. So thank you so much, Courtney. And with that, we have rounded it out. Those are the six pitches. I saw someone say in the chat, this is going to be really hard to judge. I have deep empathy for the judges because those were phenomenal businesses, lots of dynamic models and truly addressing issues that have not seen lasting meaningful solutions in a long time. So I think we've got a lot of, our judges have a lot to work, a lot of work to do. So we'll let them do that work. We'll let them tally. We're going to take just a second to remind you who all is pitched. And then we'll also talk a little bit about some of the people who are allowing us to bring this event to you and to come into your home or your phone or your car, wherever you're happening to see this today. So first we wanna thank the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation, who is a longtime partner of the EC. They are a foundation here in the US, primarily in the Midwest, that focuses on supporting community development and community economic development. So they are one of our long-term partners and they helped bring the grants to this grants to this competition so that we can award grants to our founders. Second, we want to thank Dell hey Brent, Mobile. Hey Brent, sorry, no. sorry to sorry to cut. Did in. I do something? I'm Hit going, me. I'm no, 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 I'm gonna launch the audience poll. I just wanted to make sure oh, they yes, knew what thank that you. was before I just uh, 
yeah. before you did Pop that. Up on everyone. Yes, Thanks. everyone. This is Jeremy Rayleigh. Jeremy Rayleigh is the producer, the executive producer of Pitch for Good. He is on deck to make sure that everyone is having a phenomenal experience. One of the things that is happening right now on your screen is the audience vote will be taking place. So if you don't know, just to reiterate something that was at the top, if you might have missed it, our first place winner in the up and running category gets $13,000. Our first place winner in the launch category gets $10,000. And then our crowd favorite today will walk away with $3,000. So you, the audience, are empowered to help choose that crowd favorite. You may choose any of these six companies to be your favorite. And the winner, of course, will get $3,000 uh, towards their um, towards their business. All right. Thank you so much for saying that, Jeremy. Next up, Dell Technologies. Again, Mobile Logic Sukumbi, who's rec re representing Dell Technologies here. One of the things that we wanted to showcase from Dell is some of the technology that's helped us be successful at the EC and some of the technology that we believe will be um, very important to founders as they get started. I'm sure many of you know that hard assets, technologies, um, hard assets and, and things that and enable you as a founder to design, to move quickly, to travel with your intellectual property is very important. So we want to highlight one of the tools that we think Dell is bringing to founders that we, we think we want you to die at. Hey Cortana, open my calendar. Yes, for all my spreadsheet kings, queens uh, out there, shout out to a big old screen to get things done. When I was using Salesforce a lot in my former job, I was big into my Dell double screen. Thank you so much. And Mobilaji, I didn't know if you want to pop on to say anything about Dell or Dell's presence in, in Nashville. I don't know if people, I don't know how many people know about Dell's presence in Nashville. Um, so I'd love to just hear a little bit from you about it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, again, uh, kudos to all the uh, presenters. Um, you know, I'm glad that, you know, for the uh, second uh, year, Neurodell can be part of this. And uh, I, I mean, after seeing the pitch today, I just want to reaffirm that we're more than, we're more, than, uh, we're more committed than ever, right, to continue doing this. Um, I'm going to like, you know, connect our brain with the team, the NEC team after this, you know, I think uh, we have a lot of good stuff to do with the NEC. But as, as I mentioned earlier, um, our office in Nashville is the second largest office in the States. And uh, we intend on doing more this year. And we have a dedicated team of tech advisors, right, that are willing to engage any uh, entrepreneur on this call, you know, to offer free uh, uh, tech consultation. So again, thanks for having us and kudos to all the presenters. Thank you so much, Mobilaji. And I just have to say Dell is also, stands out to me as one of the big corporates in Nashville that has taken DNI and made it part of their DNA for a really long time from their support of various initiatives around racial inclusion and racial equity to their deep partnership with the LGBT chamber. We see it and we, we really, Makes us proud to be in community with you. So thank you, Del, for that. Thank you, Mobilaji, for being here with us. Up next, I want to talk about GP Sources. And again, we had Felicia representing GP Sources, but we've got someone else from the GP Sources team on behalf of them, uh, Kristen Rebus, who's out there. Kristen, are you on? Kristen's in business development at GP Sources. Kristen, there she is. Hi there, um, good, how are you doing? I would love to know just a little bit for folks who don't know, it might be a new name to them, what GP Sources does. I know Felicia knows deeply and intimately what you all do, but what you all do, how you work with entrepreneurs. So Global Product Sources, also known as GP Sources, we are actually a global importer, um, a global sourcing company, but we also offer a bunch of different services such as design or product development. Uh, we actually just built a new building. So we have warehouse and fulfillment to be able to offer to our clients. Pretty much if you could dream up an idea, we can make it a reality, which is so, so exciting. And we actually partnered with CPR Rep and Felicia, who I think the world of, we work so closely together um, and taking her product and being able to source it and provide cost efficiency so that she can have greater visibility um, across the country and even beyond. So we're so excited to partner, not only with Absolutely. Felicia, but also with CPR Rep. 
Yeah, absolutely. I don't think people realize, you know, when we, we all are consumers who go and buy products and things like that, but I don't think people realize how much goes into the design process of the package, thinking about the user experience when they open it, thinking about the sourcing of the cardboard, the plastic, all those different aspects. And it helps tremendously to have a partner who knows the different aspects of that supply chain, knows the cost of different things, knows the timeline for different aspects of that process. It helps tremendously to take something from idea to getting it in the hands of a consumer. So um, we appreciate you for partnering with entrepreneurs to help them figure that out. It is not Thank easy. We're so excited. <laughs> we are excited too. We're glad you're here. So glad you're here. And now you're part of the EC family. We're glad you're here with yeah. us. All right, and then last but not least, we've got Cummins here. And of course we had Tony with us. Tony's still on, of course, but she's judging, she's calculating, she's tabulating. But we have someone else who's also here with us from Cummins, India Hester. India, are you out there, my friend? It might take a second just to get Incoming. promoted in. Yes. Incoming. <laughs> I can, yes, I love your background. India, how are you doing? Good, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. It's really good to see you. It's been a, maybe a couple of weeks since we last talked. So always good to see India Hester's face. <laughs> I'd love to know. So India, for those, obviously you all don't know because I'm, I was going to say for anyone who doesn't know, but no one knows because India and I uh, recently met and India and along with many, many people inside Cummins have worked um, recently to take on racial equity as a company and to tackle racial equity internally and externally. And they've started an initiative called CARE. And that's how India found out about the Nashville Entrepreneur Center, how she found out about Twin Day, and ultimately what has led us to start this deep partnership and led to these grants that we're going to be able to award to founders today. India, I was hoping you could maybe say a bit about CARE. And then uh, Tony, if you had anything else to add, you can also please feel free to hop in as well. Yes, definitely. So. Uh Com CARE stands for Cummins Advocating for Racial Equity, and this was created last summer as a first step in Cummins trying to un um, in Cummins effort to undo systematic discrimination. And since its creation in July, we have developed strategies and initiated work in four identified areas, which are police reform, criminal justice, economic empowerment, and social justice. And the Nashville Entrepreneur um, Center fits right in with our goal for CARE, and we are elated to be a sponsor this year. And just a little bit of background on Cummins, for those who may not know, Cummins is a global power leader that designs, manufactures, and distributes a broad portfolio of power solutions. And we actually have mm -hmm. a few Cummins facilities um, in Nashville and um, our Cummins filtration business is headquartered there, which actually re responded to the pandemic with masks. So I'm thank sure. You. Yes. yes. So thank you, Bryn. Thank you so much. And I love care. I love what it's representing on behalf of what matters to a company like Cummins. And it's also, I think, raising the bar for what it means to be a leader in the e-business space. It can't just be outcomes in terms of shareholder returns or anything in this very vastly, very vast changing quickly world, I think it matters a ton how we impact the world around us um, beyond, the, beyond the outcomes that happen on the financial standpoint. So India, thanks so much. And Tony, I didn't know if you had anything you wanted to add as well, or if India kind of covered it, she knocked it out of the park. <laughs> she knocked it out of the park. I want to say thank you to India and all of our Cummins folks who are on the line sending me chats and finding every way to, to try to influence the vote. I would just want you to know that I appreciate all the come and support coming out to support all of these Black founders. This is amazing. And thanks for having us, Bryn. This has been spectacular. Um, I, we can't say enough. We are so thankful to have partners like Cummins, to have partners like Dell, to have partners like everyone else on the call. It means so much to us, but it means so much to our founders as well to see the corporate community stand up and support them. As, and I'm sure we're all here also as individuals. I'm sure everyone on this call is coming as an ambassador of their organization or their company, but as a people, I think this probably makes a lot of us feel really fulfilled and poured into. So finally, we have our last partner that I wanna to touch on, Launch Tennessee. For those who don't know, Launch Tennessee is a, an organization that runs across the state of Tennessee and they support economic development and entrepreneurial ecosystem development across the state in eight key regions. And through that, they also support the development of mentor networks within industries. Um, they have a small business innovation research and small business technology transfer supports to help entrepreneurs go through that process of getting SBIR and SBTT grants. They have an impact fund that has invested in several of our companies here, part of the EC and throughout Tennessee. And they're also very focused on making sure that the state of Tennessee's entrepreneurial um, ecosystem and entrepreneurial talent pool 
is diverse in every way. And they are super supportive of our diversity and inclusion efforts at the National Entrepreneur Center and have taken great, have gone to great lengths to make sure that they're supporting black founders in our community and throughout the state of Tennessee, which if you didn't know, it's a very big population. We have 105,000 minority owned businesses in Tennessee with the vast majority of those companies being black owned. And we're also seeing tremendous rates of new people, particularly in the black and Latinx community pursuing entrepreneurship. So that pool is only going to grow. And it looks like Jeremy is on. Jeremy, do you have news yeah, for us? Yeah, so right, right before I play uh, a quick video, advertisement for launching to see Mobilaji. We're just waiting on the scores. I don't know if uh, there was any issue or anything, but we're just kind of waiting on that to, to round things out. So if you need something to shoot me a message, but I'm going to play the video while we figure it out. Empowers Tennessee's entrepreneurial ecosystem and champions Tennessee's economic story to the world. Partnering with entrepreneur centers in seven regions and four statewide industry mentor networks and Bunker Labs, we facilitate collaboration among entrepreneurs, innovators, the private sector, capital sources, organizations, institutions, and government. And government. Ours is a story about how, as a statewide community, we collaborate and provide resources needed to launch, build, and scale businesses. You can connect and learn more about Launch Tennessee and 3686 at launchtn.org. That's just a little peek into Launch Tennessee. For anyone who's interested in learning more about Launch Tennessee, I highly recommend checking out their website. And if you've never been before, their annual 3686 Festival is one of the biggest entrepreneurship festivals in the Southeast, sort of like a South by Southwest um, right here in Nashville, Tennessee. 3686 are the latitude and longitude points for Nashville, Tennessee. Just a phenomenal experience. This year, it's going to be in late September, we believe. Um, of course, there's a changing world around us, but we are really excited to bring it back to potentially be a hybrid uh, in-person and virtual event. So it is just, uh, there's Charles. Charles just put the link to 3686 down there. And it will be a combination this year, uh, potentially with 3686 to continue to expand the ways that people know about, learn about, and see Black and Latinx founders across the state of Tennessee as part of our vibrant ecosystem uh, here in the state. Really quickly, I did wanna make sure we talked to just one more person. Again, this is someone who's newer to the EC, but um, certainly becoming a big part of our fabric. Shalia, are you out there from Verizon? Yes, I am here. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I thought you might just wanna say this, I think we've got, a, Jeremy, let me know if you have to come in and announce anything or ask for anything, please do. But I think we have time. Yeah, Shalia, you got about, to, you got about uh, a minute or two and then- we'll be Okay, ready. perfect. Thank you. As you can see, this is real time. Shalia, I wanted to know a little bit about the initiative that brought you to the Entrepreneur Center, that brought your attention to it, a little bit about what you're doing across the state of Tennessee. I think you're someone who's brought just a real sense of clarity and, and laser-like focus on what you're trying to do with Verizon right now. So I'd love to you, for you to share a little bit about yourself and, and what you're doing. Sure. Um, so the amazing part of my my newer role, I've only been in this seat uh, less than two years now. Um, but what Verizon is trying to do is really build out a sustainable philanthropic footprint um, in our different markets. And we haven't seen such intentional hyper local focus before. And so my position is very new. Um, and so really laying the, the foundational work on what it can look like when Verizon shows up uh, and supports those smaller to medium-sized nonprofits. Now, I had a very um, transparent conversation with my VP, and I told her, I said, look, I'm going to uh, pitch these organizations that are doing boots on the ground work, and they're going to push forward Black and Brown people. And she said, okay, go for it. And so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually from Memphis. I'm here in Memphis now, um, but I have the Memphis and Nashville markets that I'm responsible for. Uh, and so in a quick Google search, just kind of looking around at, you know, who can we kind of focus on and, and, and support and their work. And I found the Nashville Entrepreneur Center uh, and even narrowed it down to the twin day program read a little bit about it, super excited, and decided to go ahead and pitch you guys uh, internally. Um, so we uh, sponsored you last year, and we look forward to doing the same thing again this year and really building a strong relationship so that we can help sponsor and support these um, 
new companies that we heard from today. Um, I believe there's a lot of great ideas. There's a lot of passionate people. Um, mm -hmm. They just need a stronger network around them to push them forward to the next step. And that's what we want to do. It feels that way. It feels like the hyper local is also so Nashville. It's so Tennessee. It feels like we're there's this push from some of these bigger companies who sometimes we engage with them. I'm a Verizon customer, but we don't necessarily have a face to put to that name or face to put to that company. And I can feel the difference in Verizon moving into this market and how they're trying to be deeply known and understood and of use to entrepreneurs in lots of different ways. So we're really glad to have you here in this capacity and um, happy to share the love with Memphis. Uh, we're just up the road, but we share a lot of entrepreneurs back and forth. So happy to be in a place where we're so fluid. Entrepreneurs can go where they need to go. And Shalia, we're happy to have you in the EC family, of course. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. Thank you. Thank you so much. And with that, I'm glad we got Ready that. To go. because of, and we are? Okay, good. Okay. All right. Jeremy, take it away, my friend. Oh, so. Uh, or I can announce. Again, well done. Yeah. So. No, 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 I love it. I love it. Uh, okay, I mean, I'm happy to. I just you saw your for, text. Thank, well done for everyone. Let's just say it at the same time, Bren. Um, so for up first, the winner of the launch category, which equates to 10K, we have Pop Check Pop Technologies. Check. Pop Check. Round of applause. Congratulations, well Pop Check. Done. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up Erica as a panelist, even though she uh, you don't have to do any speech, Erica. Just uh, but congratulations. <laughs> Thank, um, you. Thank you. Up next for our up and running category with the uh, award of thirteen thousand dollars, we have <laughs> Super Money Super Kids. Super Money Kids founder Courtney Hale. To the front Courtney, Courtney, we're coming to the stage. Well done, well done. Super money kids and nothing but big <laughs> friends. Courtney, you there? Courtney, Courtney. No. Here he is. I am here. I needed to unmute and turn my video on, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, congrats, my dude. Congratulations. We're glad you did. Did you win? And last. <laughs> <laughs> I, told him, I told him I won. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it should Heck be. Yeah. Everyone should be cheering. Uh, All right. And last but not least, Courtney. you guys, you guys voted. You guys selected the, the winner of the, the, the K prize. We have Potty Cap. Potty Cap. Potty Cap. Faye Pryor. Hello, Faye Pryor. You did it. And so I'm going to go ahead and start bringing everyone back in to the call, all the entrepreneurs, yes. not just the winners, because we're all winners today. Truly, I hope oh. you all, yes, yes, I hope you all know. So we had six companies, 50% of the people who pitched today, 50% of the companies are walking away with a cash prize. And of course, the other 50% are not walking away with a cash prize, but I have a strong feeling they are walking away with lots of new connections, lots of new prospects. I saw some people asking about angel investing in the chat. Um, so I hope that everyone here, um, whether you're a panelist or whether you're an attendee or whether you're one of the pitching companies, I hope everyone feels like they got something out of this that was really meaningful for them. And if you could, if you're someone who is attending in the chat, just make sure we give it up. Everyone give it up for all the people who pitched today. It is very nerve wracking and difficult to pare down all the work that you do and have done into a single minute pitch, but you all did it. And I hope you know that you made everyone here on this call proud today. Every single one of you six made everyone proud to be part of a Nashville community. Me personally and Tennessee community, me personally proud as a black person, proud to see a lot of budding entrepreneurs out here. And finally, we're gonna close with a group picture. So we're going to have everyone. Everyone of course is a winner. Everyone of course is a winner today. So we're going to have a group picture. Jeremy, Riley, are we ready to do yep. that? Perfect. I think so, Shelby is going to take us, take it away. Okay. I'm going to turn mine off and uh, we'll just do, I'll count it down on the count of three. Just smile, wave, do your thing. Judges you know, and panelists. And uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, Jeremy, we'll snag it. Yes. Jeremy, do you want to stop the screen share so we can get out everyone's faces? In yes. The... Great thank call. You. Perfect. Thank you. As they're transitioning, thank you again to all of our participants. Thank you again to all of our attendees. Again, this incredibly attended event and to all of our phenomenal sponsors of this event. We are so lucky to have a community like this. So 
Jeremy, count us down, my friend. All right, on the count of three, one, two, three, cheese. All right, I got it. Right. Bada Congratulations, bing. everyone. Roy, Josh, Brittany, Courtney, <laughs> Faye, oh, Erica. Say Courtney, it again. Alone, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone, Courtney's buying drinks. Um, everyone be well. Over 200, uh, almost, I believe we had over 300 attendees at certain points today. Thank you to our judges. Thank you, Mubalaji. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much, Shalia. Thank you. Healthcare edition is next month on May 27th, and you'll be seeing applications soon. And Infinity. that means, uh, yep. Yeah, yep. there's a lot, a lot on the call that can participate. I'm also going to be sending out a follow up to all attendees with the video but also with individual links that if you want to connect with any of these founders that presented today, uh, we have a process to make that really easy. So if that is to support them, to buy their product, to connect them with an investor or a potential customer or what have you, uh, we'll make it really easy for you guys to do so. So be on the lookout for that this afternoon. Wonderful. With that, thank you everyone. And of course, thank you to Felicia. That was the last judge that I was going to mention. And then Jeremy came in and made sure to make sure that make sure to say the healthcare participant. Healthcare pitch. It's, it's only right for up. Felicia. I know. I was like, how timely. All right. With that, we are signing off, everyone. Of course, you can always see the recording of this. <laughs> thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Enjoy your afternoon. Everyone, please be safe. If you are not yet vaccinated, please make sure you go and do that. And we will see you all soon. And we'll be safe. What y'all know about credits on a Zoom call? I've never seen credits on a Zoom call, Jeremy. I mean, the production values. Out of control. Bye, participants. Everyone be well. Come see us if you have a question about entrepreneurship. EC.co, we're here for you. Wow, Jeremy, this is beautiful. <laughs> All right, the credits of wrap. Should we sign off? Sign off. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Great bye. work. Bye, Tony, everyone. so great to meet you. Bye-bye, everyone.